I recently switched back to real Christmas trees and the answer to why may actually shock you. Don't mind the crazy hair, just came back from Nate's Christmas party and this is the aftermath. If you've been trying to live more sustainably, you're probably looking for ways to reduce your footprint. And one of those ways is very clearly the debate between real and fake Christmas trees. Now the last Christmas tree I had lasted a grand total of maybe three years and that last year it was holding on by a thread between the branches falling off the color fading and then a sudden explosion of plastic pieces all over my house i wasn't in love with them anymore and the decision had to come do i buy another fake one or do i go towards real now i know you guys are my my people when it comes to plant nerdiness so we are going to jump down the rabbit hole on the pros and cons of real or fake. So you can make a decision on which one you wanna put up this year or just which one you want to have in the future. Some of you who follow this channel religiously know that I'm going through kind of like a health journey where I'm really trying to clean up my diet and my exposure to toxins. So one of the first questions I had to ask was, how toxic are Christmas trees? And this is where I really started to question things. So it turns out Christmas trees have a lot of phthalates and PVC in them. Now, normally this wouldn't ring any bells with anybody. However, PVC and phthalates, phthalates in particular, have been completely removed from children's toys due to their toxic effects. Increased exposure to phthalates can actually cause cancer, lower fertility rates, reduced testosterone, and a host of other issues. So that's strike number one on the fake tree scale. But then the problem becomes the whole sustainability side of things. Christmas trees can be reused, and even if it's for three years, it's still three less trees getting cut down. Turns out Christmas trees are actually one of the most impossible things to recycle. Unless you can fix them, they have to be garbage. Plastic needles have to be separated from the wire frame. So the only true way to recycle a Christmas tree is to cut the plastic and then separate it from the metal, which would be just almost nearly impossible. So my question is, do you guys use real or fake Christmas trees? Let me know in the comments down below. So as someone that's worked in the forest, industry before, I kind of had an idea of what goes into tree farming, but I wasn't entirely sure specifically for a Christmas tree farm, what kind of impact it has on the world around it. Luckily, Texas A&M has a whole write-up on this. It's actually pretty cool. They consulted a number of different professionals about this because it turns out in the States, every single state has at least one Christmas tree farm that supplies the Christmas trees for that region. I know in my province, that there's Christmas trees farms all over. I've seen them in a number of different places and I personally purchased my Christmas trees from a local grower. So these trees tend to grow anywhere from eight to 10 years before they're harvested. And this means that during that time, they're responsible for a pretty large capture of CO2. This is the opposite of what we see with fake trees where we need to actually use CO2 to manufacture the metal and the plastic and ultimately the CO2 lost one that's just thrown into the dump and all the issues that come with methane release, et cetera, and so forth from a garbage disposal. So we have excessive CO2 capture. It's actually quite interesting. One thing that Texas A&M did note was that Christmas tree farms can be up to 10 degrees cooler than the surrounding area. This is just because that's what trees do. Whenever you have an abundance of plant, they tend to provide shade, higher levels of moisture, et cetera, and so forth, all of which can contribute to lowering the temperature temperature around them. And if you know anything about plants, they tend to grow very quickly in their beginning stages, meaning that first eight to 10 years is when they consume the most CO2, and then it begins to taper off as the growth slows down. So the second question I had was how much land is this taking away from feeding people? Because obviously food is huge. And if we're putting Christmas tree farms in place of where there should be farms, that can pose an issue. Turns out that Christmas tree farming, oddly enough, is done on some of the poorest soil on the planet. Christmas trees 
thrive in sandy soil. It's what our boreal forest is made on. Sandy soil is not great for grazing cattle because it gets turned up too easily and ultimately disrupts any sort of root growth or plant growth taking place in that area. Sandy soils are also typically not great for growing any form of food, produce, grain, or otherwise. And this comes down to the fact that it's likely going to need irrigation and huge fertilizer inputs due to its lower cation exchange capacity and its low water holding capacity. So the perfect place to put these is on poor soil. So that is a fun fact meaning it's not taking away from food production and it's supporting a soil that otherwise would not support very much life. Now, whenever we have a poor soil that's not great at supporting life, we have issues with erosion and ultimately some runoff. In a Christmas tree farm, they have noted that the Christmas trees are able to stabilize the soil, meaning we do not have erosion and it even is able to reduce runoff because the roots and the trees take up that nutrients as it passes by. So it's just a win-win. Okay, so just a little recap. We know that fake trees are toxic and that real trees obviously are not and are going to improve our mood and overall improve our health. We love the smell of a good real Christmas tree. We also know that they're not taking up the food areas that we typically grow food in. And we also know that it's able to stabilize soil erosion, reduce runoff, and ultimately support an ecosystem through reducing CO2 in our atmosphere. So the next question becomes how much input is there? We hear about this right now with the Netherlands and fertilizer inputs, you know, needing to be reduced. We hear this with Canada saying we need to reduce our nitrogen emissions. How much nutrients or water does it take to grow Christmas trees? And the reality is very, very low. These trees naturally are from an area that doesn't have a particular high level of nutrient value in that soil. And they also come from an area that doesn't have a ton of water all portions of the year. If we ever look at a forest soil we dig down, we usually see an alluviated layer. And this simply means a layer that looks like sand, it's white or it's beige, it looks void of organic material and ultimately nutrients for that matter. This means these trees are designed to be grown in low water input environments and low fertilizer input environments, meaning the factor of potential losses of fertilizer in the form of nitrous oxide or whatever the case is, ammonium, we don't have that here because we don't have that much for input. So another win. So I think that real trees are better for my health and better for the environment, in my personal opinion, through the research that I've done. I would love to hear your guys' debating points down below that are to the contrary of that. You guys also have to let me know in the comments down below if you grow real or fake trees, I would love to know. And if you want a video on how I keep the dang needles on my real tree, also let me know because there is a trick to that. I wanna thank you guys for watching. I will talk to my plant people later. Bye.